What's up, everybody? Welcome to the State of Wild, episode 87, a regular YouTube video web series podcast thingy. My name is Meowth, and as usual, I'm joined by my two good friends and co-hosts, Raffle and Corbett. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, you know, I'm doing all right. We're getting closer and closer to the new expansion. I'm starting to get excited for it, and we've got a boatload of new cards to talk about today. Yeah, I also feel like I'm finally over the, um, you know, that, that hump where you're just kind of waiting and waiting. We're finally seeing stuff, and it's finally getting hype, and we had the the amazing um, sort of announcement of all the wild theory crafting that I think we're all going to be able to partake in and stuff. So that's also really, really exciting as well. Yeah, so, I mean, spoiler alert, theory crafting. Uh, all three of us are going to be t- participating in the first ever wild theory crafting stream um, on April 7th. So I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's super exciting to... Uh, to be able to feature in the first ever uh, Wild Theory Crafting stream. And uh, related to that, with a new expansion comes uh, new giveaways. So got a uh, got a bundle giveaway for all of you guys uh, that are listening to the podcast. It's going to be really, really easy to enter. There will be a little link to, uh, to a form down in the description. All you guys do is click that, fill in your email, fill in your Battle.net idea, and you're good to go. Uh, so make sure you guys do that uh, before you continue listening to the, uh, the podcast. Uh, but tonight... Uh, I think no surprise we're going to be hopping into kind of the second part of our uh voyage to the sunken city kind of card review we've got 39 new cards we're probably not gonna talk about all 39 of them talk about a lot of exciting stuff some pretty powerful cards actually got released since the last time we recorded an episode so let's hop into uh, let's hop into demon hunter here first uh the first card i want to talk about is as sharon defector this is a four mana five three with rush death rattle put a sunken defector on the bottom of your deck and a sunken defector is a four mana five three naga with charge after this attacks deal five damage to a random enemy minion uh so pretty powerful death rattle minion there um i know death rattle demon hunter has not really been on anybody's radar for the uh the past couple of expansions here uh but this seems like a very clean fit in a deck like that yeah um this is actually the first time i've seen this card so it's a it's a new one for me but it um like you evaluate this based on the the front end right and then you think about the upside of the the back end and the the front end of this is just kind of good right (laughs) like uh you're happy to get this off of your three mana guy you're okay bringing it back with nizoth just because it um does uh like have immediate board impact but also the second half of it is a naga which will you know maybe work for your new zoth board as well and uh, come back that way if um, you're able to work in some kind of dredge synergy or um you know just pop a pull killed in there which you might be doing already so yeah this seems like a reasonably high quality card it's just a matter of whether or not death rattle demon hunter can come back as a deck yeah, I feel like the uh, the dredge and the the shuffle cuts in particular are going to be the hardest ones for us to evaluate because it really just does depend on how much dredge stuff specifically that we get to see. You know, it's a lot easier to see how other cards kind of fit in, um, but we'll have to wait and find out. What I really like about this in particular though is that the uh, Death Rattle Demon Hunter type decks they're they're very good at like often sticking to the board, but they can sometimes lack a little bit of finishing power, um, like reach and damage over the top, something like. Um, the Death Rattle Demon Hunter has the big 8-8, but not really much aside from that. So having like a little bit of, you know, on an open board, that, that could be like 4 mana, 10 damage. Like that's pretty like insane with the uh, the second part, which can be really, really huge. So I like this. Um, again, this kind of depends a little bit on just how much uh, dredge kind of synergy that we eventually see. The second okay. half can't hit, like the effect can't hit face, can only hit minions. Oh, enemy minion. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's a little bit yeah, worse. Much like Ruffle, yeah, much like Ruffle, this was also my first time uh, <laughs> reading this card. I, I thought it went face as well and, until I double-checked it. But, like, something to think about is the second one that dies shuffles your deck, so that brings the, the sunken one back up, potentially, right? So, I mean, that's not all bad. It's just, again, a mad, like a high-quality card, it's finding a spot for it, and it's going to depend on, like, whether or not that deck is uh, playable again. Eh, I'm a little lower on it now. I thought this was just like, going to be a format of Pyroblast sometimes, but uh, that's still not too ter- terrible. Yeah, I mean, I just like, I'm looking at the other quality of four drops that we run, though, in that style of deck, yeah, which aren't, terrible. yeah, they're not super high quality. And so anything that looks like it has potential, I'm, I'm interested in. Um, like, you, like you did say, though, if we don't have shuffle effects for Demon Hunter, if we don't have ways to consistently find this, 
uh, pretty quickly, it makes it a lot worse, so it's a little bit hard to evaluate, but it looks like a 4-drop with upside, which makes me uh, potentially excited to, to mess around with it. Could be a reason to run Glide, because that shuffles your deck as well. So. Any reason to run Glide, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> um, all right, you guys. Let's talk. In, uh, let's talk about our new uh, Demon Hunter Legendary here, uh, Lady Sathino. I think is how I'm gonna pronounce that. Uh, is a three mana two four Naga with the text "Immune while attacking." After you cast a spell, attack the lowest health enemy, and yes, that that means that this can hit face. Um, and so now we have Flame Waker for uh, for Demon Hunter. Uh, Yikes! <laughs> uh, APM Demon Hunter win. Yeah, we we did talk about with the uh, the Luna card uh, that was printed at four mana recently. That like it's not scary now, but if Demon Hunter ever gets a card that can deal damage by playing a lot of spells or cards rather, uh, then it gets scary. So this is it. But like, oh, I like. W w you can only run one copy of it, right? So it's not quite a, a flame waker. If you if you're not buffing it, if you're not like um, able to to spin cards through, you don't have a jade idol or anything, right? So like, how are you? Um, how are you actually get? Like, you need to play fifteen spells to get thirty damage, and that's if there's no minions on the board. Like, that's a pretty big ask as it currently stands. Uh, but there is some potential for this in the future. It's also just kind of seems like a high quality card in like an odd demon hunter right you, you play twin slice you play fury and you're just smashing face even harder so like i think it's just a high quality card it doesn't have to be in a combo um i think it's just good yeah we're uh we're not quite there yet on the the apm dh um like obviously we have a little bit of mana cheating with the quests which is kind of nice and sort of like a, a, an eventual home for it but we don't really have that you know, there's no, there's no like magic trick. You know, constant regeneration. There's no like ray of frost and kind of just like popping off like that. So we are a little bit uh, far away. Uh, the problem, say. the problem is that you also, in order to complete the quest, you kind of need to play a lot of spells. And then your deck is like twelve cards left, and so and, mm. and that, that's if you're lucky. And so like, I mean, it's the the kind of similar problem uh, with the, the the lion's friendly type deck, like. You know, eventually you run out of cards, and if you, if you're out of cards, you can't draw cards, and if you're can't draw cards, you can't do damage. So it's. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure if like, do we run enough spells in our Demon Hunter to like make this good enough in that deck? Uh, I mean, it's got multi strike now. You run a lot of like even I think maybe even just twin slice alone is yeah, maybe. potentially making it good enough. Twin I, slice, and... fury, Illidari studies, mana burn are like the four that are coming to mind. Yeah, I, I think it's still at three mana is probably not great in odd DH. Um, like, Crane has never been super fantastic, I think, in that deck, and that's, like, a very similar card. Um, well, Crane is, like, just... makes your minions immune when they're attacking. You don't really care about your... Yeah. You care about going face in, in odd Demon Hunter. Well, I mean, like, this card, um, immune while attacking, like, the idea of just being able to make a trade and then, you know, keep ball presence and stuff like that and... You know not give up your minions like yeah yeah this can kind of double up on phase attacks but i don't know three mana it's it's so funny where three mana is so expensive in odd dh that yeah. I, I honestly just can't say it no I, i'm yeah i'm not completely sold on it like it it's um you know you get the deck a little bit of cost reduction maybe and it does that um but um I mean, it's just going to get removed right away most of the time. So it, uh, I don't know how much value you can get out of it. Just like plopping a two four into play, but um, definitely worth taking a look at. Will it? Uh, will it still attack if it's frozen by a snowfall guardian? Uh, yeah, I I'm pretty sure they they still attack through freeze. Okay, there you go. That's how you beat free shaman. Easy. <laughs> um, all right, let's uh let's talk about two of our uh epic minions here for demon hunter. One of them might. Synergize with a couple cards we've already talked about today. Uh, Wayward Sage, two mana, two two Naga, with Outcast. Uh, if you play it from Outcast, you reduce the cost of your left and rightmost cards in your hand by one. Uh, even more mana reduction for that APM Demon Hunter. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> it, no. You don't get it. Like you, you're paying the two mana to reduce two mana. Yeah. No, that yeah. I hear zero mana, two two. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually 
reasonably excited about this, but not in necessarily the APM deck. I mean, is this just like a good card and just aggro Demon Hunter? Like, it's just mana cheating <laughs> and just like just flooding the board and stuff like that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, you're maybe not too happy if you pulled off a Direct Thar, which you probably would want to be running True. in that deck. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of like less good as a free two mana two two in that situation but like in in other situations like you're probably keeping it in your mulligan though so you're you know maybe less likely to pull it off of direct thar than some other minions for that reason yeah i mean zero mana two twos always got a lot of potential right so i i don't know demon hunters in this really weird spot where we really need to wait for the reversions to see how excited we are for these non-odd Demon Hunter cards, right? Because what they end up reverting, I think, is going to tell a lot about the the future for the class um, in, in Wild. So we'll maybe revisit a lot of these Demon Hunter cards once we get that announcement on uh, on April 5th. Uh, and last but not least here for Demon Hunter, we have Coil Scar Commander, 6 mana, 2, 6 Naga with Taunt. Battle Cry, if you've cast three spells while holding this, summon two copies of this. So it's a 6 mana, 2, 6 with Taunt which is garbage. Um, but if you do have it active, it becomes a 6 mana 618 with Taunt, which is good, except it comes down on turn 6 in, in a deck that you're just going to get hit by Snowfall Guardians and Flurgle Toxes and Spreading Plague and Poison Seeds and stuff like that. So not not super hype here about Quill Scar Commander. The upside just isn't really great. We, I feel like we've seen this card in different forms before, and it rarely sees play like just throwing stats into play on turn six isn't going to win you games of hearthstone and wild yeah. come on guys hand buff demon hunter come on where was the hype i don't think hand buff paladin would play this card <laughs> yikes that tells you a lot yep. right <laughs> yeah, not great um yeah yeah all right uh so that'll wrap it up here for demon hunter let's hop over to uh to druid uh let's start with as sharon gardens this is a one mana spell that says Give all minions in your hand plus one plus one. Uh, so just to confirm, this is all minions in your hand. This is not a mark of the lotus because uh, that would be busted. So this is kind of a smuggler's run from Paladin with upside because the sunken gardens that get put on the bottom of your deck say one mana. Give plus one plus one to all minions in your hand, deck, and battlefield. Uh, so that is, man, this is just two Paladin cards power crept in one, right? You, you power crept smuggler's run and then you power, what is the card called? Um... Invigorating, invigorating sermon. sermon yeah uh i mean this card seems strong i just don't know if there's currently a home yeah it's it it feels like it's close to being good in like a beast room because you do tend to hold minions but then you run so many spell generators for your minions in that deck that it feels like it's not gonna get that much like it's gonna hit um you know, a handful of minions, maybe. I've been playing, like, Beast Druid uh, off-stream a little bit just to see how it is, and it, it... I don't know how I'm saying this, but it almost feels like Mark of the Lotus doesn't even feel that great at times, because you're just trying to, like, stack a board. Um, I prioritize composting a lot of times over a Mark of the Lotus so that I can get to my um, Arbor Ups, which then close out the game. It's like, I... Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing where this fits as well, because, like, what it really, uh, especially the front half, wants you to be holding a lot of cards in hand, and that's kind of very different than the aggro decks that we've seen in the format and typically see. I actually think uh, Gardens here is the type of card that could really push its own archetype. Um, it, it's really tough to envision that a lot of time in Wild because the power level always seems so high and you don't really see it until you see it um but with like if we, if we get enough cards akin to aquatic form where that dredge um is relatively consistent i can definitely see a bit more of a an embiggened druid that is a sort of a little bit of a higher curve that kind of you know prioritizes um ba basically i'm picturing sort of a a hand buff paladin type uh, type deck where you're trying to really make the most of that embiggen and the uh, garden's double upping effect. So things like Saranite and you know other other cards like that could be really good. Um, you know, especially just because Aquatic Form is so busted with it. Like Aquatic Form is already like a very strong card. So yeah, I, I wouldn't rule this one out in some sort of a big Biggin type deck. Just the fact that you have so much redundancy for those types of effects there makes it sort of more worthwhile to go all the way in and build around these uh, 
this this card in particular. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about Handbook Druid here. Like, are you thinking stuff like Oracle of a Loon as well in, in those styles of decks? Or do you think that's maybe, you're thinking like even higher curve? Like you mentioned Serenites, you, you go in like Taunts maybe yeah, as well? Yeah, I, I'm thinking maybe like Oasis Surger, <laughs> like like that kind of top end, you know, like get a couple of five fives with rush or six sixes with rush i don't know something that's sort of more akin to that uh something that's a little bit more mid-rangey but um i i mean i haven't really thought too much about the specifics of the deck building but that's the sort of direction i would be you know thinking about yeah that's a very good point though right because we, we just spent <laughs> a couple minutes here talking about how it doesn't really fit into any current archetypes but it does like you said it's a very powerful card on its own so hey man there, there's our first idea for that theater crafting stream some uh, some hand buff druid <laughs> um, and it'll it's gonna pair really really nicely here with the second card that you've already kind of alluded to, uh, aquatic form. So this is a zero mana spell for druid uh, that says dredge. So basically, uh, just a reminder, uh, dredge says look at the bottom three cards, pick one of them, put it at the top of your deck. Uh, if you have the mana to play that card this turn, go ahead and draw it. Uh, so basically, you get to play a twenty eight mana or 28 card deck uh in in druid now because you have this way to zero mana essentially draw a card uh seems pretty good to me seems pretty good in a whole variety of archetypes not even just as handbook druid but i could picture stuff like dragon druid token druids and uh, maybe even beast druids really really wanting this card yeah i, I would want to play this in beast druid uh just to find your knights and uh and panthers um like, I think it's going to be maybe a learning curve for some people in terms of when to play it, because, like, there is a failure rate. If you don't get the card, you hate running this card, right? Like, it's, uh, you're just at... You basically played a Spear of uh, Sapiens for one turn that got immediately removed, and, that, like, that's not good. Um, I mean, Sphere is arguably not a good card on its own, so you need to get the draw to, uh, to like, actually get the benefit here. So the timing of this is going to... Uh, you know, depend a little bit on the deck that you're playing as well as the situation. It's going to have a failure rate and there are going to be some situations where you just have to accept that and, like, it could be, you know, if you're in an aggro matchup and you need to find the Oaken Summons, you're going to rip it on poor and hope you find the Oaken Summons. If you get Branching Paths, you're probably happy as well. So, like, there are going to be situations where, again, this, um, this does fail, but, like, it's so good, I think, that you probably are just, like, you're still seeing three cards at that point that could potentially get you out of that situation, right? So if you're playing in it, you're not just ripping this on turn zero or turn one. Um, you're really going to have to be a little bit thoughtful as to when you use it, but when you use it, it's probably going to be powerful. Yeah, and the nice part is that you don't have to play the card, right? Like, it just says if you play the, if you have the mana. So even if you do pick up a branching on turn four, I mean, if you have something better and you want to go, like, how Spellstone or something, you can still go do that later. So that's totally mm -hmm. fine. Um, I don't know, it seems really, really good. <laughs> like, it just seems really absurdly strong. So, yeah, really quite nuts, actually, I think. Yeah, I, I actually think this is low-key probably the strongest card that we might have seen so far and might talk about today, which is saying a lot, because um, there are a couple of nutty cards uh, that have been revealed, but... Uh, we're running into this druid problem like what are we cutting from these decks i like, know I... <laughs> I, I was about to i was about to say that like i have no idea what the room is now in things like ramp druid like we're getting so there are already cards that i i want to be playing that i don't know how to fit in there like scale of anixia is a card that i think is really good but i'm like god what am i even cutting at this point yeah and like we've talked about like miracle growth as well as a card we want to try to fit in there man what a what a nice problem to have if you're a druid player like 40 really really good cards you can't figure out <laughs> what to cut where where you, honestly you probably can't go wrong with a lot of these all right so let's uh let's move into uh to hunter here uh the first card got a lot of people talking let's talk about barbed nets uh one mana deal two damage to an enemy if you have played a naga while holding this choose a second target odd quest line support but also just like straight up quest line support uh one mana deal two arcane shot number three and four yeah yeah this card just good you don't you, you only read the first sentence and then you add it to your questline hunter deck whether it's odd or not uh i think that the way things are shaping out you probably don't want it to be odd or don't need it to be odd right now um and so just add this to your deck ignore the naga stuff because you're not running any nagas in that deck and um enjoy additional copies of your um aim or arcane shot 
<laughs> like, yeah, this is the card like, that people. I don't know. It, it's this a is the card that, right? Like, this is the card that people need to be complaining about for Questline Hunter. Ignore <laughs> the legendary. Like, this is the one. Like, <laughs> it's, the, it's, it, it's funny. I, it's, it's like the most. Um, like, it's the most obvious reveal we've ever seen because it's literally just a copy of a card that we're already playing, right. basically. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's, <laughs> but, we know how good this is. Yeah, I know. But, like, I, I think that, yeah. like, Westline Hunter is just kind of running 28 cards right now, and this is 20 yeah. 30. So. It, it is funny that people are complaining about the Legendary, which we got into last week when, right. like, this is so much better for the deck. It's not even close. Like, that is pretty funny. Yeah, absolutely not close. All right. All right, so let's talk about our, our, our next card here. A new secret uh, being revealed for Hunter. We've got Emergency Maneuvers. Uh, secret, when a friendly minion dies, summon a copy of it. It's dormant for one turn. So it feels very... Uh, it like, protects your board, <laughs> right? Uh, unlike stuff like Pack Tactics, it doesn't need to be traded into. It's just if it dies, it'll come back after a turn. Um it is important to note that this is now going to be a choice off of Tavish. Uh, so you will get like an upgraded version of this. Uh, I'm assuming, I don't think it's been revealed what the upgraded version is, but I'm assuming you'll get two copies of it. Um, I think they, it has been revealed. Okay. Yeah, 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 two copies. Um, and uh, they will still be dormant though uh, for a turn. So I guess my question to you guys, so obviously this will be an option off of Tavish that you will likely take sometimes. Is this ever worth running main deck in something like Even Hunter or that just a regular Secret Hunter, um, which real talk I think is being super underplayed, just like Drek'thar Secret Hunter? But uh, how are we feeling about the power level of this secret in Wild? I think it's just a worse pack tactics, isn't it? Like I would rather have the immediate effect in a format as fast as Wild than uh, wait in a turn. Like the benefit, I guess, is that if it hits exactly a Cloaked Hunters or maybe even a Gossiper, like it it gets a second turn of protection so it can't like the immediacy is a bit of a double-edged sword and that your opponent can like take it off the board before it becomes a problem but like in that circumstance you're already sounds like you're already way behind so um so are you pulling that game back anyway it, i guess is my question i don't know i would tend to believe that i would rather have the immediate impact of pack tactics even if it's a slightly lower cost or a, like lower stat line um Maybe if you're running like a big beast hunter instead with the secret passage to like thin out your deck, um, this would be more worthwhile in that type of uh, situation where you get the, the full stat line of uh, one of your beefy boys. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the big benefit I see is that, well, pack tactics only really works in minion trading for, uh, matches. This is both like AOE protection um, and getting the pack tactics thing. So right right now, a lot of the hunter secrets, they don't really protect against removal that well. Um, like cat trick is a good one against AOE. Ice trap can kind of slow it down, but that's kind of it. Um, and so it's something like Mechathune, right? There aren't really a lot of options that you have beyond those two. You end up on like pressure plate and things like that. So I think I actually like this um, in that deck just because it, it is, it is going to get actual value in both board centric and slower matchups. Um, and even some of the cards that you get, uh, like them, them coming back as dormant isn't that bad, but something like a phase stalker or, uh, I don't know, a dragon bane, <laughs> like you can maybe throw it out there a lot more proactively than you otherwise would. And then when it comes back, that can be good. Um, so yeah, I, I think I actually like it just because it, it is good in almost, or, or it has a chance to activate against almost everything it, it feels like. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you do bring up a really good point, though, but there's a lot of Hunter Secrets that are just kind of, like, dead in a lot of matchups, which is really bad. Like, half of your Secret Suite just doesn't activate in, in certain matchups. So I, I am in agreement with you. Like, I think Pack Tactics on the surface is a stronger card, but I think the fact that this is useful in all matchups compared to just, like, 50% of them, I think is a, is a really big point um, in its favor. But I... I I'm excited to mess around with it. I, I really like a lot of the new Hunter Secrets that have been revealed over the past uh, past year or so. Um, but let's move into our, our next beast here. Uh, this is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three as Sharon Saber. Uh, it's a 4-mana 3-3 three, three beast with Rush. Has the Death Rattle. Put a Sunken Saber at the bottom of your deck. Sunken Saber is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three beast with Rush. Death Rattle. Summon a beast from your deck. Uh, so, this is a really weird place for me. Where it's like you want to be cheating out big beasts from your deck with that second half, but 
but then you're running a 4 mana 3 3 beast that kind of interferes with all of your other beast cheating effects um so it, it's a really really weird crossroads for me which makes me really you know struggle to figure out where or if we even want this yeah i mean we were talking when pet collector got released that it like it was close and i don't know this could uh, fit in a similar type of deck because both um both portions of it are beasts so you're basically just getting three free damage from the the first half of it off of a uh off of a pet collector into the board um the the awkward thing is that you can't run this and like a vandar in in that deck so you are pretty reliant on just going all in on the pet collector and plus maybe a guardian animals and then like your top end does get kind of weird in that instance right like you're also running big beasts probably just those that have charge um but then there's like a failure rate associated with getting those you can't really do it consistently i don't know it's a cool card i want to play it but i don't know how good it's going to be yeah i didn't really even think about that um Saber into pet collector curve where yeah you can you can hit this trade it in pet collector get the sunken copy and then trade that and then bam you can get a king crush um i mean that seems pretty sick i i don't know i hadn't really thought of that but like you said there is kind of a clash with the vanda so maybe there's a uh, a different home or a different way to build it I, I never really want to rule out mana cheating it just like me outside as well though there's some weird uh <laughs> there's some funkiness because the front part has the beast tag as well which while working very well with pet collector perhaps um does make things a little bit stranger for things like well i guess even katharina it, it might still be fine i don't know um i guess i like it mana cheat good but it's difficult to find a viable home for this in wild yeah i guess my real struggle is like in a deck where you're playing pretty passively until turn four turn five usually you're being saved by the fact that you're pulling like a 312 taunt out of your deck or a really big beast and then if you like pull the front half of this you're like well I, i'm not saved and so honestly though like it might still be good enough to run because it's redundancy in that mana cheating effect when you look at that back half of it but i i don't know like giving up the the uber high rolls for consistency uh, i guess is the question here when it comes to this card right because you are like like you said you are pretty passive your first you know four turns with the deck and this at least makes that only three turns now <laughs> so like uh i mean there there is maybe some hope there that that could uh help offset it so at least you get to do something on turn four more regularly yeah yeah i, I think i'm a little lower just uh just thinking about it yeah the more you think about it the worse it looks you know. i think so yeah uh, speaking of cards that look worse the more you look at them, uh, let's talk about Naga's Pride. Uh, this is a three mana spell that says summon two, two, two lionfish. Uh, lionfish are two mana, two, two beast. Um, if you're, if you played a Naga while holding this, give them plus one, plus one. So they become the three mana, three threes. Uh, so six, six for three mana when we have cards like Petting Zoo and other broken cards in our format. This card just it's not going to cut it in wild. So unless you guys have anything you want to say about it, uh, I'm going to hop over here to Mage um, and talk about the the big legendary, Commander Sivara. It's a 4-mana 3-5 Naga. Battle Cry, if you've cast three spells while holding this, add those spells back to your hand. Uh, so it is important to note that it will be the first three spells that you have cast when this enters your hand. So let's say you draw it early in something like Quest Mage, uh, and you cast like three spells to try to complete your quest and then you play time warp and then you play this you will not get the time warp back to your hand uh, that is my understanding as to how this card will work you like you get like a magic trick and a biscuit back to your hand instead which might not be the worst thing in the world um but that being said four mana three five uh situational battle cry uh does this really fit in, in the spell based mage decks that uh, we're looking at in the format right now because I don't know if it's strong enough to kind of support its own archetype here. Okay, I'll try to help then. Uh, on the on the quest mage front, um, I think it's really good in quest mage. I think, um, you know, being able to dupe up coins is really really nice. Um, obviously, so yeah, you, like if you're not actually paying mana, but you're like trucking along on that quest completion, that's obviously really good. I'm trying to think of something that's beyond just quest mage. Um, Nothing's really popping into mind. Like, the thought of Secret Mage 
is there, but probably not just because like you're going to be holding onto this card for a long time and you can't really carry that many cards. So I, I don't really see it there. So I think it probably is just a quest mage slash Reno quest mage uh, card. Yeah. And it'll be, it'll be good there probably, it's particularly in the quest version, I think, because you can run two copies of like licensed adventurer and stuff. License well, adventure, running... mailbox dancer, cards like that. Right. Yeah, you're running four copies of licensed adventure in that deck. <laughs> yeah. Like coins are one of the primary ways you complete the the quest in the the minion based version already. So like, yeah, like you said, getting free coins back to hand. Um, because I I actually played that deck fairly recently, and I found myself like waiting for a brand to get extra value off of those uh, minions, and now you can just like play them into the commander and probably be fine with it. Like. And you could brand. You're already running brand yeah. in the deck anyway, so you could brand the commander and get six coins. So that sounds gross. Yeah. That that sounds gross. All right, quest mage enjoyers uh, rejoice. Um, I don't know who's going to be rejoicing about volcanomancy. It's a two mana fire spell here. Choose a minion. When it dies, deal three damage to all other minions. Um, so there's some cute synergy here with stuff like uh, life steal minions. So like if you play a Ziliax. Mm. I don't think so, because uh, this says when it dies, deal three. So it's right. actually the spell that's dealing the damage, not the minion. Yep. That's okay, Meowth. I saw the tweets. I know. They were wrong. That just makes this card so so bad. I mean, it was already bad. Fair, but it <laughs> like there was a cute synergy there, and then it was ruined. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Two mana, choose a minion. I... It, it's fine against Pirate Warrior. You like choose a pirate and then you ping it off and clear a board. So it's like you play this on two and then you ping on three. Um, and then you still die to the Juggernaut because you're playing Rena Mage uh, against Pirate Warrior. So, hey, I don't know. It's, it's a sweet card. I just don't think it's very powerful. I think it's a little too slow uh, for a format. Right. It also gives the, like, if you make the play that you just described, you also give the opponent the opportunity to, like, adjust and play around it, right? Like, it, it, it telegraphs it. It's kind of like very similar to the Demon Under Sigil, where like, okay, well, I'm just not developing next turn, or I'm going to figure something else out to do instead of developing that turn. Like, hey, I drew this Ankar. Well, now at least I can play it and instead of, uh, you know, committing to the board any further. So, um, I, like, Mage already has good enough uh, board clears. I don't think that's the thing that's holding it back from being um, from having good decks right now. Yeah, I think this card is very, very cool um, just because, you know, like it can be flexible where it can choose your minion and opponent's minion. You can ping it off. You can play it early and not immediately ping. Like super, super cool. Um, not going to see play. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not going to see play. So let's talk about paladin cards that are maybe uh, going to see play. So let's start with the uh, the big one. Um, I, I did not mean to do this, but let's talk about the Colossus minion first. Uh, the Colossal minion. Uh, so here's like the the big mech. Uh I don't know how we've, we've got all these mechs in an underground city, um, but ignoring that fact, we've got the Leviathan. So the Leviathan is a 7 mana 4 5 mech with Colossal plus 1 uh, with Rush, Divine Shield. After this attacks, Dredge. So you'll put a card from your deck on top of your library. Uh, and then the second part here, the the appendage, if you will, uh, the Leviathan's Claw is a 3 mana 4 2 mech uh, with Rush, Divine Shield. After this attacks, draw a card. So the obvious play pattern here is you attack with the front half of the Leviathan, you choose a card to put at the top of your deck, then you attack with the second half here, and you draw that card. Uh, I think this is a pretty powerful card. Um, I honestly think you're probably running this in something like Mech pa or, um, in Reno Paladin. I guess the question is, do we like this in Mech Paladin? So like, I know it's 7 mana. Um, we are playing Mech Paladin, so obviously it'll cost 6 or 5 um, if we can hit our galvanizers and stuff, but uh, maybe running this as the as the top into a mech paladin. Regardless, card seems really, really, really good. Uh, do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I, I agree that it's a high quality card. It probably has a better home in uh, in arena paladin deck where you're actually like able, more likely to want to spend the the seven mana uh, for it. Like I'm personally happy for it in mech paladin because uh the requirements for the theory crafting stream are that you have to have um one legendary deck in your or one legendary card in your deck for wild that is from the new set so like now i can play uh, a mech paladin during the theory craft set 
but I think it probably gets cut from lists after that just because of the the speed at which it comes down. Like the you even if you're paying five or six mana for it, you want to be closing out the game on that turn, not really like fighting back for board necessarily. But like it's a high quality card. Like I think you run it as a as a card in uh um in Reno Paladin, which like just already runs a plethora of high quality cards so the fact that you can make room for it at seven mana says you know a fair amount about this card and um it it's really big board swing <laughs> like the fact that they have divine shield and rush is pretty crazy right like and then then it also draws a card that you get to choose from the bottom of your deck like it, it does a lot of things it's really good yeah uh not super exciting. It's just like, wow, that's good, huh? <laughs> and then it's kind of like, yeah, it probably goes in Rena Belly. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see like if there is a, a bit more of a late gamey style mech deck. Um, specifically, like maybe they can bridge the mid range a little bit because yeah, I mean, you know, when cards are this strong, you usually try and find a way to make them see play. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not super glamorous. They, I guess the uh, the Leviathan here. Yeah, I mean, I we mean, could just we could just pull like a, a tax paladin game plan where we have everything cost four or less, right? In in our mech deck, and then we just like you know you used to stick uh, light forge carryall just because it was that bonkers of a card in mech decks. We probably still run everything like three or four or less, and then just like shove this at the top end because it's like that busted of a card. Yeah, I mean, you could also you never mind. You're never running Kangor's army in any deck. Oh no, <laughs> like, oh, we always put that route. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move on to uh, another big Excellent. mech payoff card, though, before Raffle keeps dreaming about Kangor's Endless Army. Uh, radar Detector. Two mana, draw five. No. That, that's, all, that's all it says. It says two mana, draw five. Uh, because it says, scan the bottom five cards of your deck, put any mechs, or draw any mechs, found this way, and then shuffle your deck. So essentially, this is a two mana, draw five. And Raffle, please do not take away from the sensationality of my comment. Please, thanks. No, I have to, because it only says... Two mana draw five if you don't know how to read um or if you don't understand how to build a, a deck um I, I actually took a look back at the old mech paladin and if we're just like throwing this into that um it like it was running maybe 20 22 mech so two-thirds of the time it hits like that means that you're actually drawing like you're paying two mana to draw three and a half cards uh which is still bonkers and you still play this card like you just you, so what you do um, is you look at an old mech paladin list, you see that it has divine favor, you look at this card, see that it costs one more man one less mana, and it is more reliable in aggro mirrors, and you say, Oh, I cut the divine favor for a radar detector, now I'm winning more games of Arstum. And um like this card is this card is bonkers, but like saying this is two mana draw five is like being a little disingenuous that's not what it does most of the time and it's going to disappoint you when it doesn't do that if you that's what you call it um so like it, it doesn't need to be that to be an absolutely bonkers card and potentially the reason to be playing mech paladin it just needs to say two mana draw three and a half cards and you're like yeah i add that to my deck yeah uh we we'll co-sign it all that's super bonkers though and you like I don't know. I can, I can definitely see Mech Paladin being a very, very real deck. I was kind of already wondering um, whether the Mech build was even just superior to the current hand buff builds, or at least like a, a you know reasonable alternative. Um, and I think with all the support we're getting, we are probably going to end up switching over to Mech, uh, the Mech package. You know, I want to see some Mech hand buff stuff, though. I don't know if we're going to get it. Um, <laughs> in a dream world, right, you would be able to cut things like Outfitter and maybe just have this as like uh radar sector christology maybe like banner man and that kind of is about where you're looking but we'll have to wait and see what all all the rest of the mech cards are because i don't know i'm excited like you, i mean this is this is so strong do you just cut outfitter anyway like yeah probably yeah i are mean you, i still we, want more hand buffing but yeah right like, i think you just a mech hand buffer a mech outfitter, i know I it, it's not gonna happen <laughs> you're, you're i think you just run smugglers and banana man and then just like let the magnetic do its thing um yeah that would be my guess because you're already getting pretty decent uh like mechs from this set too do you really need to buff them or would you like i think you just really want to reduce their cost and cheat them into play like i mean i guess like mech hunter had a three mana savage roar but like it, it got away with just like applying pressure with uh by cheating out mechs quickly and vomiting them into play like 
it, being able to do that and then on top of that you know draw a bunch of cards with radar detector maybe, maybe that's just good enough like that like I, I mean i if we can bump radar detector up to uh two mana draw four like maybe that's a reason to r not get to cut outfitter or to run viewer hand buffs you know yeah i mean i think cards like this though two mana draw five or two mana draw three and a half regardless cards like this are what bring back archetypes from the grave right like really powerful synergistic build around cards in standard that become even more nuts in wild uh this is what you love to see uh so excited about radar detector and we got one more uh one more mech here to talk about we've got as sharon moon catcher three mana four two mech with divine shield battle cry put a sunken moon catcher at the bottom of your deck and the sunken moon catcher is a three mana four two mech with divine shield battle cry summon a copy of this so essentially it's a three mana four two and then a three mana eight four with divine shield later on in the game uh seems like a decent minion to uh to buff i, I guess the question is are we going a little bit more mid-rangey or are we trying to stay super low to the ground uh with these mech paladin builds i think this is already low enough to the ground that like you're you're paying two mana for this most of the time anyway and it's like it's a good card for two mana and then you can you don't need to dredge up the uh the other one because you just you have the radar detector in your deck right so like I don't know. Like, I'm I'm sure there's a like you were running replicating menace in the old uh, Mech Paladin, right? So like, there's got to be room for this. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I know magnetic is really good with hand buffs, uh, but like this just has to be good. And just I feel like this is better, right? Like because the yeah, back half is with hand buffs as well. Yeah, I like it, especially because we do have the radar detector. And, and again, like we're, we're talking about the dread stuff. This is an example where we just need to see everything because with radar detector, this card gets so much better um, than what I like would think otherwise. So yeah, I, I think this is pretty damn good. Yeah, God, I can already hear uh, the flying machine entry line, and then oh God, I'm not looking forward to that PTSD. What's the flight plan? Yeah. I don't know what the flight plan is, and I, I really hope I don't have to find out. Anyways, uh, let's move on to uh, let's move on to priest here. Uh, let's get the bad cards out of the way, and then we can talk about some of the exciting stuff. So let's start with uh, with whirlpool, nine mana nature spell here in priest. Uh, it's a nine mana spell that says destroy all minions and all copies of them wherever they are. That includes your deck as well. If you are killing neutral minions and you happen to have a copy of that neutral minion in your deck. Um, I don't know. We have Psychic Scream in our format, and Psychic Scream doesn't really see plays. So, so, uh, so yeah, Whirlpool. You guys get to move on to the next card. Um, I would say that like three years, three to four years ago, maybe or whenever, uh, Psychic Scream was printed. I think it was probably about. Oh, three Ruffle, to four don't years. make me feel old. Don't make you feel old. I don't want to say how long <laughs> Psychic Scream has been around for. At that time, maybe you could make an argument for... This is, like, one of the first cards where maybe I could see an argument for being better than Psychic Scream. Like, the Silence and Destroy is just objectively a worse version of uh, Psychic Scream. This one is arguably a little bit better. But nobody cares about value anymore, and uh, nobody makes it to 9 mana anymore. And, um, yeah, it's bad. Yeah, very bad indeed. Um, as Sharon Ritual, 4 mana spell here, Silence a Minion, summon a copy of it. Put a Sunken Ritual at the bottom of your deck. Sunken Ritual is Silence of Minion. Summon two copies of it. Uh, we have a version of this card already. Um, wailing, not a Wailing Soul. Un, it's like it's a format of spell that says Silence of Friendly Minion. Yeah, we, yeah, Unsleeping yeah. something or Unsleeping. It's it's not a good card, which is why we don't know the name of it. Um, and this feels very similar to that, which makes me think that it's not very good. Well, I mean, it feels very similar to that because the front half is identical. So. <laughs> Um, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, hey! This can silence enemy minions as well. So, oh, uh, we have a one yeah. mana card here that uh, silences all enemy minions and uh, also draws you a card when it's useless. So, I mean, I, I actually like this card a little bit. I, I'm not a complete silence priest doubter. Is that is that sacrilege? I, I don't know. I I like the idea of silence priest. I mean, I'm um, gonna I'm gonna play it because I've been looking for a reason to play silence priest, but like I don't think it's gonna be the thing that makes the deck good. Although we haven't tried Silence Priest with a Palm Raiden available to us. So. I, I have tried Silence Priest when Drek'thar came out. Oh. Still not worth running go. over normal inner fire. <laughs> Absolutely oh, no way. Well, no. well, nobody. Yeah. I mean, that being said, that. it is me, and this is the genius of Raffle and Corbett, so maybe there is a list out there somewhere, but I, I played it, and I was like, 
it was cute when you like direct third into two humongous razor leaves and then killed them the following turn with like blesses and stuff but yeah i i think the current versions of, of inner fire are just like way too consistent to to merit thinking about silence priest so which is sad humongous razor leaf silence priest was like it was sweet but not not let sure if it has a home let, let me hope for a little bit all right just let me believe no feel free i if you can make it work <laughs> god i will play so much of that but i i have my doubts until proven otherwise all right so let's move into our our next two priest cards here um and it just seems like perfect that we talk about a pm priest uh because we've got handmaiden three mana three two naga that says battle cry if you've cast three spells while holding this draw three cards uh and then you have priestess valish Mm, valish we're gonna go with that it's a zero mana one one naga that's zero mana legendary by the way uh important for all of you fist of rod rodden um enjoyers out there in shaman now you actually get a legendary off of your uh your lightning blooms uh, but she says, refresh a empty mana crystal for each spell that you've cast this turn. So basically, zero mana at four or five mana. Uh, I mean, let's talk about this. Let's talk about Nazmani, Bloodweaver, Radiant Elemental, Priest. Do do these two cards push it into like legitimate viability in Wild? Seems doubtful. Um, like are, you're making your insights and direct thars a little bit less consistent in that way. Like, um, what's the payoff, I guess, is is my question, um, other than maybe a bunch of giants. So, yeah, maybe Grey Four is, uh, is good. Grey Four Arcane Giant. Um, takes a lot of spells, but that deck can do a lot of spells. It depends on how quickly it can pop off. But, it, like, and, like, is that better than just getting to Auctioneer? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be really tough to evaluate. I think this is a card that like has the potential to be very broken, but I think like my knee jerk reaction is that people are maybe overreacting to it a little bit because I like, um, again, what's the, the priestess in particular, I think the handmaiden's nuts. (laughs) Like, I think, I think handmaiden is just disgusting in like arena priest, um, or just about any like spell heavy priest. Like that card seems just silly. Um, I, I, I'm a little bit more skeptical of the, the priestess Valish because it's like, you're spending a lot of mana, but like, where are you getting, I guess is my question. Where where do you end up with? And like, if at a certain point, at at a certain point, you already have infinite mana with that Nazmani Bloodweaver deck. So like, what is adding more mana crystals that you get you for that? I guess is my question. Yeah, the uh, the handmaiden in particular just looks sort of busted in, in something even like spell in a fire priest. Um, I don't know. There's probably just gonna be a lot of priest decks that see this and they're like, "Oh, three mana draw three. That seems above average." Um, yeah, so that seems good. The priestess. Um, I was totally with you when I first saw it because it is difficult to see exactly like where the payoff is. Like, how does it practically fit into a deck? I'm not sure, but I think it's also a kind of card where I was kind of talking a little bit earlier where you don't know it until you see it. Um, Like, this is the type of card that can definitely open up its own thing and really, really push something that hasn't previously been that viable in Wild. Um, Mana cheat equals strong (laughs) a lot of the time, Um, especially in a format with Radiant and, you know, doubling up of Radiance and Shadow Visions and things like that. You can probably do some pretty silly stuff, potentially. So... I don't know. Um, I'm very excited to dive into all things uh, APM Priest and uh, Spell Priest and everything like that. Mana Cheat Priest. So I'm not exactly sure where it is, but Mana Cheat, good. Do, yeah. you, do you not see this fitting in? Like, I know you were playing like a Nazmani Bloodweaver Priest with Lothebs and Malag- like the new Malagos. Do you not see this, like both these cards, like slotting in kind of ideally in there? I know that's you are lowering your spell density, but you're also, you have two draw threes now in your deck to continue to find you gas so maybe you're okay with kind of lowering the spell density just a little bit 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird, um, especially with the the Nazmani, because like if you commit mana to the Nazmani, then you're not committing mana to spells, and then like what are you actually refreshing? You know, <laughs> like mm. this sort of like if you're already at the point where you're ripping those spells, you. I don't know. It feels like a lot has to go right sometimes for that to be like super super strong. Um, I guess uh, with palm reading and like powered shield, things get a little bit more comfortable, but. I don't know, like, maybe there's a way to build it and make it kind of good in that home as well. Um, but yeah, there could also be something completely different, unique. So, I, I'm not sure. I'm having a lot of tricky... A tricky time just thinking about what the deck looks like, and I'm not thinking about it too much, to be honest, until we see everything. Um, but yeah, I'm still I'm still very intrigued by this card, just because mana cheap. Yeah, I think that if it's going to be something, it's going to be something um, in a different direction than what we've seen before, like Corp said. Like, I think mana cheap inevitably this card is uh you know going to find somewhere i i just i am i don't see it right now and the pe the places i keep seeing it being suggested it's just like but is that better than what it, like is that improving the deck like again with nazmani if you have infinite mana like why are you refreshing mana crystals like if you and e even in that case so you with like the maligos version of that like you operate under the assumption that you have infinite mana you're not paying mana for maligos anyway maligos draws your entire hand whereas Handmaiden only draws you three cards. And on top of that, you're, again, making your consistency a little bit lower with your horns and your insights to the point where you can't get to the Nazmani as quickly and you can't get the infinite mana, um, you know, available to you as quickly. So it's just like, it, you know, if this is going to do something, it's going to do something in a different deck entirely. And again, like, whether it's Nazmani or Radiant, like, you have near it with palm reading already you have nearly infinite mana in the decks where you're playing spells or a lot of spells that would make use of this so it's like uh, i i don't know how are you benefiting from it other than um you know getting playing this plus uh like you play nosmani on three you play a bunch of spells uh for zero if you've um or either reduce their cost or you're just running them naturally you play second nosmani and then uh, or you play this and then get to play the second Osmani so that you actually get infinite a little bit faster, but that, like a lot of things have to go right there. You've got three minions in hand, which means you don't have a lot of spells in hand, so it's like, I I, I don't know. I think uh, I think a card we talked about last week, Switcheroo, helps Priestess a lot because it means that you can sort of direct the build and make it a lot more consistent, um, which, which does help wherever this probably ends up landing, I think. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I haven't been considering switcheroo with it uh, as much because when i see so switcheroo i just see darkness and boris so maybe that's my, <laughs> i know it's hard to move past that meme after like the absolute twitter indoctrination that we went through right <laughs> I, I i sense uh corbett theorycraft deck number one right that's two switcheroos two uh of the three mana draw threes and got a legendary in there i i see a theorycraft uh -huh. deck right there baby all right uh let's move on to to rogue here let's not get too bogged down in time um, so we've got two legendaries and a pretty sweet epic card to talk about here. Uh, so let's start with the Asharan Vessel. So this is a five mana spell that says summon two 3-3 three, three pirates with stealth. Put a sunken vessel at the bottom of your deck. And the sunken vessel is a five mana cast when drawn spell that says summon two 3-3 three, three pirates with stealth. Uh, I gotta I gotta show my, my shuffle rogue just a little bit here because I love that deck. It's not a good deck. I know it's not a good deck. But this with, uh, with Stowaway... Mmm, mmm, so good. And we also have we have we have the cut list to, to help discount this. Okay, uh, and that's it. That's all. I'm moving on. It's a five mana spell that summons two three threes. I know it's not very good, but I'm gonna I'm gonna play it and have some fun. Let's talk about Krabatoa. So this is the colossal minion for Rogue here. Uh, Krabatoa is a six mana six five beast colossal plus two. Uh, it's gonna summon two Krabatoa's claws. So Krabatoa's Claws are two mana, two one beasts with Rush, uh, Death Rattle, equip a two one Claw. Krabatoa has the text: Your Krabatoa Claws have plus two attack. So that means the minions that you summon are four ones with Rush, and then the weapon that you equip on Death Rattle, as long as Krabatoa is still alive, will be a four one weapon, uh, because it is named. Uh, Krabatoa Claw, uh, the weapon itself. That's that's a lot <laughs> on on a card. Um, 
but we are looking at a six mana spell here in rogue um outside of i i i'm thinking about stuff like even rogue uh rena rogue but <laughs> don't don't give me that face uh where where do we see this where do we see this uh kind of seeing play legitimately um if there is a home for it uh i'm not seeing a home for it presently like uh because even rogue isn't a real deck and i think that let me let me have something Come on. Maybe you could consider it in a in arena rogue, but I think you want to be a lower curve than that uh, in most of your uh, arena rogue type decks. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't see it. I don't know this card does a lot of stuff. Like this is, this is a lot of things going and a lot of power. Um, I'm a I'm a little bit of arena rogue believer. You know, like, we'll we'll get to another card very shortly about arena rogue. Why I have some hopes for it. So yeah. I mean, it does that. Like, Reno Rogue is kind of the only conceivable rogue deck that goes this high of a curve, right? So everything else is kind of just out the window. Yeah, I mean, this is a sixteen or six six mana fourteen seven, right? On on its surface, you're summoning two four ones with rush that equip a four one weapon on death rattle. Like that's stats. It does a, a lot. lot of stuff. It does a lot. <laughs> um, that's a lot of stats. Okay. And so, like, if you're if you're playing like an aggressive reno rogue uh with kind of the top end of kravatoa and uh the next legendary that we're about to talk talk about i i can conceive uh like, i would i would kill for this to be a little smaller and be a five drop and put in odd rogue like oh, that would just be great but we can't yeah. give any of those odd rogue enjoyers any anything good right we, no can't give them a smidge no, no no chance not one bit i'm excited about kravatoa if anything god the art on this card it's a it's a giant freaking crab dude i'm so excited <laughs> for this uh, even if it sees no play, I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing just a little bit. Um, all right, so let's talk about kind of the big the big hype one though. Let's talk about Pirate Admiral Hook Tusk. Uh, so Pirate Ad Admiral Hook Tusk is a rogue legendary, eight mana, eight eight pirate. Battle cry: If you have summoned eight other pirates this game, plunder the enemy. So plunder the enemy uh, gives you the option of three things. Uh, if you have completed the prereq, uh, so you get to choose between three options. Uh, so you can either take their supplies, so you take five cards from the opponent's deck, and this is like straight up take them. They are now running a 25 card deck uh, because you have taken five of them and added them to your hand. You could take their gold, you can just yoink two cards from the opponent's hand and, and put it in yours, or you can take their ship, so basically you will take control of your opponent's highest attack minion, uh, so basically mind control, uh, targeted mind control here uh, for eight mana. A lot of these effects seem pretty powerful uh that being said you have to get to eight mana and have played eight pirates so this kind of lends itself like corb was mentioning arena rogue seems like the only place for this uh i mean even rogue it isn't even no i'm just kidding. uh arena rogue come on you get all these even cards maybe one day um i, I know how crazy i sound but pirate admiral hook pirate admiral hook tusk uh eight mana eight eight ignoring the uh, the juggernaut high rolls Right where you summon this and then play a, a smite alongside a gorehal and you have Aww. 25 damage. Um, Sorry, ignoring rough. that. Yeah. Um, how how excited are we about about hooked us here? This is one of my favorite cards of the set. I am very much looking forward to this card. Um, like, I mean, you say it costs eight mana, but you throw down a spirit of the shark, get your scabs online, <laughs> baby. You got yourself a stew going. Um, also in a wild, like it's important to know that we have the, uh, the one mana pirate that adds two pirates to your hand. We have patches, which this does say summon. So even, even the spell that we just dismissed, which we should have because it was bad, uh, would technically work for, <laughs> for, for this deck. Um, the, you know, we also have the capacity to add the amalgam of the deep now, which can add more pirates to your hand. So you, you're not going to be having a hard time getting this online. Um, you're going to be having the hard time surviving to, to, to turn eight to uh, actually play it, I, I think is actually going to be the, uh, the the difficulty here. So maybe it is just something like a, a, a Reno rogue type deck. That, um, but it sure sounds fun. I want to do it. Um, you know, bounce this a few times with Tenwu with... Uh, um shadow step Ooh, now you're speaking my language Ooh, you know like <laughs> you, you can even throw in a shadow caster like if you're talking about reno rogue you're running a lot of battle cries anyway so like those cards are good 
Um, so, and again, we have enough redundancy. You have uh, with your pirates that you can get this online pretty quickly. You've got like um, raiding party as well. Like, I think there's like there's a deck there where um, you can certainly get the um, the requirement online. It's again just like you're dead by the time you do it so that's that's the bummer but it's going to be something that's going to be really fun to do during the theory crafting when we're all just kind of goofing around and maybe like the first week of the expansion but like i don't know seems cool yeah i i adore this card i love it so much and i i love the idea of reno rogue as well like we have just seen reno paladin pop up out of nowhere and be a conventional uh, sorry and be a, a competitive reno deck and that's not something that a lot of us really thought about and so I, I think the pieces were actually legitimately there for Arena Rogue deck, um, like straight up. I, I think this is a thing that could be strong enough because um, unlike some of the slower Reno decks, uh, a lot of these bounce effects that we're talking about that work well with Hook Tusk, they can actually stall the game out pretty well against some of the faster combos. So like with Lothab, you can you, you can replay Lothab with 10 with Shadow Step and all that kind of stuff um, that can give a lot of survivability against some of these combo lists. And, you know, this is your late game. Like, look... Ticketus, we've talked a lot of shit about Ticketus uh, for, a, for a long time, but it's not like Ticketus is bad when it hits in, in those slower matchups. Like, it's huge. Um, you could, you know, even do things like steal Shadowwalks and sort of disrupt the opponent's hand like that. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a little high uh, Copium, but with Flybooter, Patches, Brigand, like, like Ruffle said, getting this online, I don't think that's even a problem in Reno Rogue. Um, and I think this is a really, really fun top end card and very, very excited to give it a shot. I love it. I You just gave me the greatest dream uh, I, I could have ever hoped for in thinking about like stealing a Shutterwalk with this because then the Shutterwalk that you steal <laughs> gets to repeat this. And yeah. I know what I'm going to try and do. Uh, <laughs> so I've got my first deck for the Theorycraft. Yeah, I well, I mean, you pretend like people are going to be playing Shutterwalk Shaman at the Theorycraft. Come on. But uh, sure, they will. I would never. What are you, <laughs> what are you talking about? No. <laughs> You're telling me, Meowth, that you don't want to like interact with people uh, during the theory crafting stream? No, no. Theory crafting stream is all about me. I don't. I don't care about anybody else. Nobody else gets to have fun. So, <laughs> you know. yeah. I. But r real talk, though. I never thought I would hear the day of Corb advocating for a Reno deck. So that tells you how excited he is about about <laughs> Pirate Admiral Hook Tusk. Am I wrong? <laughs> I'm a, my... I'm a Reno Galaxy enjoyer. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is uh this is my favorite card of the set so far though. Like yeah. uh, hands yeah. down. It, it, it's up there for me. I, I really like this card. And it's like one of those cards that's going to be like 10 times more powerful and wild than it is in standard. So like we we get our fingers crossed that like maybe it doesn't get nerfed or anything like that. Oh, I, and so I we would, actually get I to would enjoy worry. it. I wouldn't be scared about this getting nerfed, yeah. but like I, I do agree that like with Flybrood and patches, it, that it, it's a much greater chance that it's just online on turn eight every time. Yeah. Whereas in standard, maybe not. I don't know. I I can never say never when it comes to standard nerfs <laughs> about fun cards and wild because I've been burned multiple. You've been times. hurt. You've been yeah. hurt too many times. Yeah. yeah. One one too many times. Cry, cries and hand doll. One one last thing. Like, what if we get an Octobot revert? Would that like? Well, Octobot doesn't yeah. uh, rotate for another year, so we we got some time. Unfortunately, oh. it was a Baron's card. All right, circle the calendar, Ruffle. Yeah, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it already. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to uh, to Shaman here because Shaman got a ton of new cards. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the one that everybody was freaking out about. We've got uh, the legendary here, Radiance of Azshara. This is a three mana, three four elemental uh, legendary minion. Uh, it has fire spell damage plus two. Your nature spells cost one less. After you uh, cast a frost spell, gain three armor. Uh, so kind of one of your big payoffs for multicaster shaman. Um, immediately people were like, whoa, unstable evolution with this Sork Apprentice in shaman. Um, Galen, one of the uh, the lead devs uh, for Play Hearthstone, has already confirmed. Um, tweet went out. When Voyage to the Sunken City goes live, Unstable Evolution will have its functionality change from a repeatable this turn card to an echo card, which it was already. Uh, it just didn't have the echo keyword on it. By attaching the echo keyword to it, it's going to uh, it's going to get hit by that snip snap nerf where echo cards cannot cost less than one. Um, and so uh, I'm going to head back to Gallon Suite here. Uh, while they function mostly the same, we apologize it for being unclearly worded for a short period of time. 
Uh, we also understand that a fun part of this card is to randomly generate something like a Radiant Elemental and to have a crazy turn. So even though this will now work with Mist Wraith, it'll effectively still be a nerf to the fun, so there will be full refunds on Unstable Evolution. So they have kind of preemptively addressed uh, this concern uh, about a wild interaction here between Radiance of Ashara and uh, Unstable Evolution. So with that being addressed, uh, Radiance of Ashara does still seem kind of nutty, <laughs> even, even without the Unstable Evolution uh, interaction. Yeah, I mean, it's an elemental that gets fetched off of uh, Dungeoneer as well. Um, like, there's a... I mean, spoiler for some of the other cards, but there's a lot of, like, payoff for the multicaster type effects that Shaman already is kind of running a lot of uh, variety of spells. So, like, there's... Yeah, there's a lot to play with here that has some serious potential, I think. Um, like, again, I think that maybe this is one of those instances where... You know, maybe you just shove it into Shadow Walk Shaman, but I think the real benefit is potentially in something that we haven't necessarily seen yet. Uh, maybe a, um, you know, a multicaster burn style like we've been seeing in Standard. Um, I don't know. It, it looks uh, looks cool. And there's some other cards that uh, kind of support that type of archetype within the, uh, this expansion as well. So there's there's definitely something there. Yeah, I mean, you can always just shove it in um, Frog Shaman off direct there. Still pretty good, I, th I think, a lot of the time. I, I I don't know. I need to see just how many nature cards are really worth playing in that deck and stuff. But, I mean, we did also get the, like, Scalding Geysers, so we can get some um, some of that fire spell damage, a little bit of a benefit there as well. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this card has lots of text on it and words good. And I think it'll find a home uh, in probably a variety of Shaman decks. So really, really nice build around um, for the class moving forward. Yeah, God. They they take away one Sork and give us immediately one more. I, ooh. Ooh, not a... Not super. All right, calm down, Matt. You've still... <laughs> you, hang on. Before we move to Shaman, you've got to focus on Raiding Elemental. True, right? Raiding Elemental before. Blizzard, please. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's talk about some of the other multicaster. I'm gonna call it multicaster shaman as like the archetype, just because that's kind of the build around card uh, for for these decks. Uh, let's talk about Coral Keeper uh, as kind of another big payoff card here. Uh, so this is a five mana three four Naga Battle Cry. Summon a three three Elemental for each spell school that you've cast this game. Um, so this very much reminds me of Hunter's Spellstone, where you like play a bunch of spells, upgrade it. And then you drop it on turn five, and you get like fifteen, fifteen worth of stats. Uh, seems pretty good, especially because this upgrades when it's not in your hand, so it doesn't have that spellstone problem of being like a really crappy top deck. It is a lot of stats if you get it on like turn five uh, with like three or four spells already cast. So I, I know, I know, Wild is trending more and more away from board-based strategies, but I mean, a five mana fifteen, sixteen has to be really good. I mean, it's kind of one of the things that's helping make Secret Hunter such a good deck, right? So it maybe, uh, I, yeah, it comes down a couple turns slower than Penning Zoo, but it, uh, like on pace with um, with Spellstone. So maybe there's potential there. The problem is, is that what you're describing is a board-based deck that's not like making plays for the board until turn five. So like that's my hesitation with it on top of just like board-based deck and Wild Bull. So... I mean, you can bloom this out on three. Like, we can we can do some stuff and then bloom it out. It seems kind of good. Um, I don't know. It's a lot of stats and stuff, and that's strong. Um, so I'm sure there'll be something with the... The multicaster... Like, like the multicaster burn deck that Ruffle's really describing. Like, I'm very excited to see what that ends up landing once we see everything. Because um, I, I mentioned on Twitter, like, I love this direction for Shaman. I think it's so cool. And I'm very happy that they're leaning all the way into it after seeing kind of the success that multicaster specifically had um, in the class. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it, even if it doesn't end up being, like, one of the most popular archetypes. I think it's super sweet, like you said, leaning into the uh, the spell school synergy um something that shaman really is kind of unique right i think it's one of the few that has like four or five spell schools uh so kind of excited to see where this goes i think coral keeper is a very very powerful card all right so moving on from there uh let's talk about a couple of spells here uh let's talk about schooling this is a one mana spell it says add three one one piranha swarmers to your hand uh, so just a reminder piranha swarmers kind of scale uh every time you play a piranha swarmer i think this card would 
kind of merit discussion if they were murlocs instead of beasts, like I thought last week. But uh... <laughs> I was about to make a joke about this. How dare you? <laughs> Sorry, you, you, can, you can make the joke. I was waiting like my to. turn. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make your joke, go ahead. No, no, the moment has passed. <laughs> Regardless, I, I don't think adding three one one rushes to your hand uh, is good enough uh, for wild. So. Uh, I'd like to move on unless you guys want to uh, to chime in here. Um, so let's talk about another one cost spell here. We have the Asharan Scroll. So Asharan Scroll is a one mana spell that says discover a fire, frost, or nature spell. Uh, I'm assuming it gives you one of each of the three options. Uh, so it'll offer you one fire, one frost, one nature. Um, and then put a sunken scroll on the bottom of your deck. The sunken scroll is a one mana spell that says add a fire, frost, and nature spell from your class to your hand uh, it is important to note that neither of these spells do have a spell school which might limit their usage just a little bit um but in standard quest mage like the the ability to discover a spell that progressed your your game plan and discover a situational spell was powerful in standard um i i don't know do you do you think that this like would you run this over something like investment opportunity i think in, in frog shaman um like outside of the just like the pure multicaster shaman builds, would you would you run something like this in in that style of deck? Uh, I don't think so. I think if you're running this card, you're running it to like fill out your multicaster type effects. Um, like as a standalone card, one mana. Like there are a lot of bad shaman spells that fit those classes. Uh, so, like there are going to be times where even if you need a specific spell school, you're not going to be able to pick it because the option is just so bad. So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, not, not super into it either. Like, uh, even, even in the multicast deck, I'm not sure about it in wild. Um, yeah, just cause Ruffle said there are a lot of terrible stuff out there for Shaman over yeah. the years. Man, it's really sad. Ever since they removed that discover opportunity, discover kind of just has not felt super, Strong. Well, I mean, this one. I, this I know one this one's perfect. not really related to that. Yeah, I'm just talking about like, general. general discover. Yeah, yeah. Discover effects don't make me excited anymore in Wild ever since they removed that class bonus. Um, but let's talk about Wrath Spine Enchanter. This is a seven mana five four Naga, uh, seven mana five four. But it has a, a pretty insane battle cry potentially, uh, because it says cast a copy of a fire, frost, and nature spell in your hand. Targets chosen randomly. It's important to say this is uh, that this says cast a copy. So if you were to, I don't know, macaw it, you could cast another copy of the fire, frost, and nature spell in your hand. I guess the question is, what are the really sweet fire, frost, and nature spells that are out there that, like, you drop this on turn seven and you have an absolutely absurd board swing? Do we know yet? <laughs> I mean, um, I was I was looking at them and they it doesn't look great. Like, you have... Things like maybe don't stand in the fire for a one-sided board clear as your fire spell. Um, glaciate as uh, <laughs> your frost spell. And then like either Eye of the Storm or Stormbringer as your nature. Like it, it's not looking good for uh, the things that you want to do with this. Uh, but I mean, it's something to keep an eye on, I guess. Um, but I don't know. You could get, uh, you could use Spirit Echo as your nature spell and get this card back to hand and just keep replaying it for a Go bunch of glaciers. Yeah, but it has to die. So infinite value in Shaman—that's never something we've had before. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> not not as exciting. I was trying to, I was trying to see if there was anything there that you guys had thought up, but yeah, card, nope. I think cards just bad. <laughs> it's also just seven mana. Um, all right. Last but not least, uh, actually. Another one of these Shaman cards that I'm actually super excited about. Uh, Bioluminescence. Three mana nature spell. Give all of your minions spell damage plus one. Um, I don't really know where this finds a home. Because I don't think this fits in stuff like Frog Shaman. Where you naturally want to take advantage of, of the spell damage. But that kind of seems gross in the uh, the right kind of deck. This potential like three mana spell damage like plus three or plus four. For the, uh, the rest of the turn. Um... I, I don't know if it's strong enough for a build around card. Like I don't I don't know if we have the the token generators, um, in, in shaman. Maybe I'm missing something, but uh, 
kind of honestly kind of wish that this was maybe like two mana or, or something like that for uh for even shaman and just use this as like a finisher with some burst but i know two mana would be kind of kind of gross but what are you guys thinking about bioluminescence here i i don't see it <laughs> um like maybe in i mean maybe with coral keeper in that uh in that like multicaster burn type deck so you could but like I don't know, that's clunky. That requires things to stick in a format where things don't stick. Um, and if they do stick, it means you did. So, um, like, yeah, it... You always have to keep an eye on a card like this because Lightning Bloom is going to exist in wild uh, in perpetuity. But I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like you can just... You already have the Rune Dagger in Frog Shaman. You just you want to kind of brute force your way through your deck and do it in like number of spells, not necessarily the, the spell damage itself. So uh, you're also hitting overdraft through your big burst, which costs one mana that costs three. So I, I, I don't see it. Yeah. It seems too clunky. Um, I don't know. Radiance into voltaic burst into voltaic burst into this into stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It seems, it seems way too much. I think. Hey, I, there one day will be a, a deck where you just you drop this and it's like spell damage plus five crackle crackle lightning bolt and you're just like dead regardless of the board state so maybe 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 one day like rough well, no not not regardless of the board state though because you would have to have a board to make that play work right like well, as in like you don't care about taunts or you don't care about your board being frozen by snowfall guardians i, I you you're you are right uh about yeah, we'll that. take us we'll take both easy carry yeah, exactly. I think Voltaic Burst is maybe there, but then it's also just like... But then you're running Voltaic <laughs> Burst. Right, and aren't you just still going to get more damage off of your Overdraft than you are from, like, your Bioluminescence in that <laughs> yep. type of deck anyway? So, like, what are you even doing? Hey, let me... I'm going to mess around with it. It's going to be bad. It's going to be another one of those pet cards that I have that just, like, is absolute garbage, but I won't ever give up on it. So, don't worry. It's It's going to be there. Let's talk about this one Warlock card here. Um, three mana, three, four, Murloc as Sharon Scavenger. Battlecry, put a Sunken Scavenger at the bottom of your deck. The Sunken Scavenger is uh, a three mana, three, four that says give your other Murlocs plus one, plus one, wherever they are. So, Battlefield hand and deck. Uh, this is a Spider Tank, though, in Murloc Warlock. Um, I don't know. The, the Sunken Scavenger is busted, but then you're playing murloc warlock and yeah i'm not seeing murloc warlock being a thing in our format unfortunately yeah i'm gonna try I, it but... i keep wanting to use the uh murloc like m-u-r-l-o-c-k but it's just not going to come across via podcast if you can't see the text so right. yeah murloc warlock it is and murloc warlock not looking uh looking too hot all right let's move into warrior here we've got four cards let's start with the uh the fires of zin as shari Two mana fire spell. Replace your deck with minions that cost five or more. They cost five. Uh, this seems like a waffle card if I have ever seen one. I love it. I, I cannot wait for this. I am going to smash you idiots with a bunch of five <laughs> mana big stuff and uh, you can't stop me. Honestly, I, I don't even think you can be mad at that point if that does happen. Um... Are you are you planning on playing this on like an even warrior so that you can like gain as much armor as you possibly can and then play these five cost minions or are we just like I don't I don't care I, don't I, care. like I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, we haven't got that far like what are you talking about <laughs> I'm just gonna my plan was to put as much card draw in the deck as possible so that I can find, find the fires card. as quickly as possible and that was that was that was about as far as I thought maybe <laughs> I make it even I don't know who cares like that, uh, you I gotta just... make it even for that maximum clickbait that's the thing I think he I think. I think it might anyway, just because, like you said, you're not going to be doing any. Like you just want to weave in those hero powers. Um, you don't do anything until you play this card, other than draw cards. So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Speaking I, of drawing I, I cards, uh, I do want to just like Martian was playing a, a pirate, not a pirate warrior, like a, a warrior combo deck. Um, the combo irrelevant, but the there's like that draw engine of uh, what's it called, Forge in the Souls, and then the two five one tradable weapons, uh, which actually warrior combo deck aside actually seems like a pretty decent card draw engine um which might be what we just have for decks like i this. actually i actually played even warrior 
I, I played even more two days ago. Uh, and I, I did indeed use that package. What? Okay. I played I, it, I off, mean, I played it, it off stream. That's that's what I do in my free time. <laughs> what, what's the point of playing that deck if you're not making content? What's wrong with you, Corp? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was trying to win Ruffle. I looked at it and I was like, this is the nuts. And then I realized, <laughs> oh, it's 2 a.m. I need to go to sleep yeah. desperately. <laughs> that's a sign you need some sleep. <laughs> Oof. All right. That aside, yeah. though, that draw engine does seem pretty powerful, and I, I think more decks should take advantage of it, including the uh, the fires of Zinashari deck. All right, I'm on it. Thank you, Raffle. I'm looking forward to the uh, the YouTube video. I'm looking forward to getting body bite in the theorecast stream and then being featured in the YouTube video. That's what I'm excited <laughs> for. Um, all right, let's talk about the trench stalker. I think this is the first ever eight nine minion that we've ever seen. Um, it's a nine mana eight nine beast battle cry attack three random different enemies or three different random enemies sorry um they power crept king crush I'm just, uh not not really but also kind of kind of at the same time <laughs> kinda, yeah yeah kind of did <laughs> yeah yeah like the, I, I i mean no the, the fact that it's on a battle cry <laughs> um is kind of disqualifying right like you're not i don't know yeah and the fact that it's a battle it cry means that when you cheat it in it sucks which exactly. means exactly. So you're not playing it in big warrior. Like yeah. where are you playing it? You're not like you're not. benefiting it from getting it back off of a new Zoth or anything. So you're, you're not yep. playing it is the answer. I, I see. I see a face from Corb. I don't know if he is agreeing or if he like. Oh, it's nine mana in warrior and a yeah. battle cry. I don't know what you, you know want what? for me. You know what? No, I'm playing it for five mana after I play Fires <laughs> of Zin Ashari. So, uh, yeah, boom. Boom. All right, you'll also be playing this card that is absolutely terrible, I think. Lady Ashvane, 5 mana, 5 5 battle cry, give all weapons in your hand, deck, and battlefield, plus 1, plus 1. No pirate tag, nothing like that. It's just a 5 mana, 5 5. Uh, no. But you still run this. Everybody, what you do is you put this card in your pirate warrior. Just just put Stop. it in there. Just no, put no, it no, in there. No, no. Play it along with Nelly, and you've got two new good cards. You're fine. Just run it in Pirate Warrior. Well, fine. at that point, nobody can make fun of you for not or or bully you for not playing any new cards in your deck day one. Yeah, exactly. Ruffle, our listeners are way too smart to get caught up with what you're trying to do here. <sighs> okay. Uh, well, this next card, this next card, you're definitely putting a Pirate Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, do we want to at least touch on the Lady Ashvane for a second? I mean. Much, much better green skin, like eight bomb warrior guys. Actually, really good with bomb warrior curves from the wrench. Uh, okay, convincing no. anyone? No, no? <laughs> okay. Why isn't this a wait? Here, why isn't this a uh, Naga? It looks like a turtle, dude. Um, it doesn't look like a Naga, like okay. if you, like it's got a shell of some sort. All right, never mind, move on. Turtle do that, meow. Turtle, do, yeah, Lady Ashman, you're not wrong. No, and I'm just like staring at the earth trying to figure out what the heck it is. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, as as Sharon, the names in this set, I can't with the with these names. Uh, as many times as as I've said as Sharon, I think I'm still saying it wrong. Uh, as Sharon Trident, three mana, three two weapon, uh, Death Rattle. Put a Sunken Trident at the bottom of your deck. The Sunken Trident is a three mana, three two weapon. After your hero attacks, deal two damage to all enemies. Wait. All enemy minions. Um, yeah, put it in your pirate warrior. Yeah, board clears in your pirate warrior deck. Yeah, it's perfect. So what happens is you draw this, or if you draw this, um, you know, before you complete the first stage of the quest, you're still fine because you can draw the sunken part of it uh, off of the the first stage of your quest. So just put it in your pirate warrior. It's fine. God, I I really hope yeah. nobody's actually taking it seriously. I I really do. Um, I hope they are. Raffle, your your hatred, your hatred is taking over, and it's gonna actually make the experiences of all of our beautiful listeners that we love and value and cherish even worse on ladder. Don't do don't do that. Come on. I know you. I know. I know. If they're playing pirate warrior. They deserve it. That's all I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Cod bad. Anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> moving on to neutrals. <laughs> Let's move yep. on to neutrals here. We've got Slithering Death Scale, 7 mana, 5, 9, Naga, Battle Cry. If you've cast three spells while holding this, deal three damage to all enemies. Uh, we've got Pelican Diver. Uh, Pelican Diver is a 1 mana, 4, 1 beast. Um, it is a 1 mana, 4, 1 beast. It does start dormant for one turn, but then it wakes up and uh, has Rush. 
So you're essentially playing a. I mean, it's a, it's a one mana four one, right? It's it's a lot of stats, not very much health, but it is a lot of stats. Uh, unironically, I I was grouping these all together as like arena cards, and then I read this again, and I was like, it's actually not terrible. Um, is there is there room for for Pelican Diver anywhere here, in our format? No, not not for a one mana four one. So. Okay. Nah, but nah. I think it's more like it just the dormant is so slow and like at least it's only dormant for one turn, but like mm -hmm. dormant minions feel so bad to play. No, oh. I, I think it's just the one health on a one cost thing. I don't know. Yeah. Like like where where do you want this meowth? Where are you envisioning this battle? I, I mean, I'm just I'm looking at this as like, hey, one mana for four attack, and if they they can't deal with it, that yeah. is four attack. That, I don't know how they're not dealing with it because it has base. one health, but. Hey, you know what? It kills the ever oppressive totem golem. We have an answer okay. to it finally in our format. No, here we go. You put this in pirate warrior. <laughs> I mm. <laughs> actually, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. I'm down. Yeah. yeah? Okay. All right. I'm glad we're on the same page. Finally. Cool. Yeah. I've been <laughs> I've been brought in on this one. God. Slim scale diver. This is a three mana two four murloc. Uh, dormant for one turn. Rush poisonous. Uh, and then Gangplank Driver, five mana, six four power. Oh yeah, but no, this is, I think the Murloc is the one I can see yeah, being played because it has yeah, poisonous and. Rush. But it's got dormant that, for one turn. What do you want? But it kills something immediately. That's a that, does it like does it when you play it? Does it still trigger Flurgle and stuff like that? Or uh, I think so because I think Flurgle is play right. So that should work, but like. I, but I like then I, it's so you're playing this as like a four mana two. Like I, it'll come alive know, on turn I four, kill something. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that you're running this main deck, but I think you're okay if you like hit it off an underbelly angler. If you like, f you know, find your way into this. Like, I, I think it's the best of the three. I don't despise it in Murloc Shaman. The idea of it. I, I think it's a little it. bit too slow for what Murloc yeah. Shaman wants to do. Is my concern because it's like it, you, you want to like. You want to be killing them, <laughs> and this mm. doesn't quite kill them. I think that you already have a card that does something a little bit better in the um, in Oxen? the rush. No, the well, oh, the the rush well. gift. <laughs> yeah, the the one three. Yeah, yeah, I think it's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's just it's not filling a need that the deck has necessarily. Yeah. Okay. All right, and uh, all memeing aside, this is the card. This is the new card that you run in your pirate warrior, right? This is the uh, the gangplank diver. This is the five mana six four pirate. Dormant for one uh, one turn, rush immune while attacking. Mm -hmm. Yep, totally, absolutely. This uh, is the one, yeah. It has the yeah. pirate tag. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of these cards not while playable. It does kind of confirm, I think, that Dormant is the new evergreen keyword that they were talking about coming back this year, I, I think. I think. I think Echo also could be um, the considered for one uh, of those as well, right? Like, it, if they're solving the unstable evolution by giving it Echo, like... I, oh. I think it's just a precedent that they're setting is that they're going to make keywords a little bit more evergreen than, like that. So that was my assumption. I, when they printed the three mana card, I'm like, oh, they're just going to give uh, Unstable Evolution Echo, right? Like that that seemed pretty obvious. Um, it, it could also tip off a, a core set inclusion, but we'll see. I think they just missed it. <laughs> like that, that is my genuine reaction from the uh, the unstable Evo thing. I think they just completely missed that. That's why it's coming into the game, functioning with Echo with no actual like card uh, card text change or anything. They just whiffed on it. Um, it got pointed out on Twitter. They thought, okay, it needs to be changed. I I think that's what happened. So. Either way, at least it's getting changed before the expansion instead of uh, you know shortly after. I think that that's a better precedent to set. So I don't really care yeah. whether or not they saw it as long like. If they're changing it, I'm probably like for the health of the format. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, we still have two cards left to talk about here, though. Um, let's talk about Naga Giant. Yet another giant on the block. This is a twenty mana eight eight. Uh, it is Oof. a Naga. Cost one less for each mana that you have spent on spells this game. Unfortunately, unlike Arcane Tyrant uh, or Mana Giant, you actually have to spend mana on this card, which makes it really bad. Yeah. Um, God, why do I want to spend mana to cheat out my eight eights when I could do things for uh, free? Twenty mana! Oh my God! I, I, so even if you much. spend every mana on spells, I don't think you can get this out until like turn seven. Turn seven, yeah, yeah. that's twenty-one by six, which is so turn six. Yeah, yeah, card sucks. I mean, it's another 
it's a bit more redundancy for Holy Wrath Paladin that doesn't actually need that redundancy, so no. Nice. Can just pass on this. <laughs> <laughs> I would still rather run, I think, Thekel Molten in that deck. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, last but not least, Queen as Shara, namesake for all of these cards here, I think. Uh, I do not know anything about the lore, but everybody was super excited about her when she got revealed. She is a 5-mana five 5-5 five five Naga that says, Battle Cry, if you've cast three spells while holding this, choose an Ancient Relic. And so you have four different Ancient Relics here. You have Ring of Tides. Ring of Tides is a spell, uh, I believe. Uh, after you cast a spell, this becomes a copy of it that costs one. You have Horn of Ancients. This is a three mana spell. Add a random colossal minion to your hand. It costs one. You have Zal Atoth. Uh, this is a two mana zero five weapon. After you cast a spell, deal two damage to the enemy hero and lose one durability. And then you have Tidestone of Gol Golganeth. God, these names are killing me. Uh, one mana spell. Shuffle five random spells into your deck. Set their cost to one. Draw two cards. Some of these seem kind of busted. Um, Ring of Tides seems pretty abusable in our format, right? Uh, I don't know. Extra one mana time warps seem very intriguing to me. Um, as well as maybe like a Pyroblast. Two mana Pyroblast with the uh, the Zalatoth, the weapon. Uh, that being said, you do have to have this in your hand. Cast three spells. Uh, and then spend five mana to, to cast Queen as Shara. Uh, so what are you guys' thoughts about this, uh, this legend, legendary minion? Uh, it seems really difficult to value. One thing I've learned in Hearthstone, though, if a card does as many things as this seems to do and gives you as many possibilities as this seems to, it's going to be good. Like It's reminiscent of um, basically every version of Kazakus that we've seen, I think is the, the best comparison. And these effects seem pretty nutty. I don't, I don't know how impactful they'll be in our format. That's like, could this be the the payoff for that spell priest to like bounce with seance and um, you know make use of your um, additional mana? Maybe I don't know. You could get like four uh, mind blasts for a total of like what six mana? Is that good? Uh, maybe I don't know. Um, I don't know. the The tides of uh, Golganeth seems uh, pretty good, just for a one mana draw two, even. So, like, if if you can activate this, through a lot of hoops though for that one mana draw two. Are you though? Like, I, I don't know. It depends on what deck you're playing, and I, I guess you're making your deck worse in the process. So maybe, but, um, like I don't know. Like the, those mind blasts also cost zero. If you're like if you're able to bounce this multiple times uh, for the the ring of tides, that seems kind of uh, silly with a uh, with a mind blast that can burst things down. But you can also just like you can effectively do that already anyway. So I don't know. Um, I'm I'm not going to doubt this card. It seems like it does a lot of strong things, and like I said, it, it seems just like another Kazakus type card. But like maybe less uh, single card win condition than uh, than Dragon Kazakus man. Yeah, I think uh, Kazakus is a really good shout. Um, Kazakus was out in the first set of last year, right? Like, that was just in the. You mean like expansion. four mana Kazakus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, make a golem Kazakus. Um, yeah, so putting that kind of card in the neutral, I think it's an appropriate power level. Um, I don't think it'll be that amazing and wild. I wouldn't be surprised if it snuck into a deck here or there. But, um, I don't know, like, it's very, very cool. <laughs> like, the, uh, the, the options that you get, um, is really, really nice. So I think it's fun. Um, maybe into that, uh, that kind of, like, Shamanar type that, you know, we'll, we'll mention it, you know, if you go a little spell heavy on that. But, um, I don't know. Seems fine. Like, probably not, probably not that good, though, in, in Wild, I don't think. Yeah. I have a lot of hesitation with these cards, and this is just, I guess... I don't know how easy it is or how consistent it is going to be to have this in your hand when you cast the three spells, right? Because there's going to be a lot of times where you top deck this and it just like feels awful or cards like this that have this requirement. It's I'm always I'm always hesitant to say like it uh, but it ha it has a really powerful payoff. I just don't know how consistent it's coming down, right? It is my big issue with with this card and kind of cards like it. Yeah. That's, I think, a reasonable hesitation to have. Yeah. 
I will say, like, Quest Mage probably is going to love this expansion. I think of <laughs> a lot of the decks, like Quest Mage, Arena Quest Mage, like, they, they play all these generated spells anyways. They, they're they playing stuff like coins and one-cost spells. So you're, you're probably really happy uh, if you're, you know, a Quest Mage enjoyer. I think at a certain point you're getting too many cards to end up doing the same thing, though. Like you, you, Redundancy you really... is good, though, right, when it, when it comes is to it, this? Is it necessary, though, when you're drawing your entire deck? Like, you're cutting, like, you're already cutting so many, I, I don't know. I don't like with multicaster your your deck is already empty by the, by the time you're uh playing the parrots so it's like yeah um I, I I don't know we'll see All right that is going to wrap it up for the 39 new cards that we have seen so far kind of the big big chunk of, uh or the second big chunk here of reveal season uh I mean like there are lots of really really powerful cards I guess out of the ones that we've talked about today what do you guys uh most excited about or scared about when it comes to some of the new cards i'm just excited for hook tusk that's that's all i've been thinking i kind of figured that was going to be the answer talking about her uh hook tusk and the uh the two mana warrior spell i just like that's all i'm i'm drooling over those ones right now yeah i'll give a i'll give a shout out to the priest um priestess uh valage and handmaiden i think that's i'm interested to see where we end up with that um yeah i think that would be the, the big two yeah I think most powerful card probably like aquatic form of just like slotting into like every imaginable druid archetype from what I can imagine. Um, but also just like mech paladin support, dude. Two mana draw five seems seems pretty good. Uh, yeah, I, lots of really powerful cards, right? Even for a uh, first set of the year so far, it's looking like uh, at least in wild. But yeah, that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Uh, I'm assuming next week we're gonna be uh, talking about the last little chunk here of cards. And so I hope everybody listening uh, is excited for the expansion as well. Uh, Raffle and Corb, thank you uh, thank you so much for joining me again and again. Uh, let the people know where they can find you and your content, including your, uh, your theory crafting stream coming up soon. Yeah, you can find me on Twitch, where I'll be doing the theory crafting stream at Raffle, as well as uh, on YouTube uh, with the same handle, and uh, Twitter and Instagram at RaffleHS. Yep, and you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, at Corbett Games. Um, so thank you guys very much for listening or watching. You can find me at Get Me Out on all those platforms. Uh, so just a couple of reminders here as we close out the show. Uh, if you guys are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anything like that, if you guys enjoy the content, make sure you guys drop a like, comment, subscribe, small thing, but it does actually support us a ton. And, of course, there's a giveaway going on. Make sure you guys don't forget about that. Really, really easy to uh, to join. Make sure you just go down to the description, click that link. It'll also be in the pinned comments if you guys are on YouTube. Appreciate you guys listening all the way to the end. Uh, you guys are awesome. And we will see you guys again next week to talk about even more cards. Have a good one.